What's up, everyone? It's time for the game plan. NFL Week 4. We're talking best bets against the spread. We're talking DFS top plays. We're talking with John Statsational Alessia, the sports betting goat from Sharp App. Let's get into it. All right, Kevin Allen here, a.k.a. The Geek from DFS Army, and it is time for the week for game plan. Here's how this works. John and I are going to go through all the games from the Sunday slate for NFL Week 4. We've got four games picked out that we're particularly excited about, not just for betting, but DFS angles as well. We're going to talk betting angles. We're going to talk DFS angles. We're going to break it all down for you. So, John, you're coming off of a pretty good week um, over at Sharp App. Um, up, what, four or five units on the top props articles that you put out each week? Yeah, we're doing a ton of props. I've been tweaking it a little bit and uh, kind of bringing that number of total props that we bet lower. So that should help our, our ROI and uh, make it a little bit easier for everyone to play all the props. But uh, so far, so good. Going well. I love it. And, you know, and... Uh, the, the Skynet AI model absolutely crushed it last week. I, I just, I've, I've given up almost going against the models when the, mo it's like scary to go against it because the thing's like, it's like Nostradamus out there. Um, I believe it was nine and four in trackable plays last week. Um, the ones that I tracked and it was a few games that just didn't have a bet signal. And I mean, those numbers are spectacular. So the AI machine learning is kicking in. It's learning. I'd say speaking growing. of the, speaking of the AI, I've been given because you know, kind of behind the scenes, we don't have it up in the app yet, but they give projections as well, the AI model. So I've been uh, giving those out in our Discord. So for those uh, interested, every once in a while, I'll, I'll post, especially for the for the standalone games, I've been posting some of the projections and some of the props that the AI model likes. Um, nice. For instance, they had, you know, not a very exciting one, but they had Mar on, uh, on Monday night over one and a half. That happened pretty early in the game. He got two field goals early. So that was a good one for everybody. Nice. Nice. I love it. Machine learning, artificial intelligence, spitting out bets over at Sharp App. Really, really good to check it out. And NFL week four sets up really interestingly for DFS purposes, John. I've already started going through, you know, the salaries. I've got my first look uh, videos out for FanDuel and DraftKings right here on the uh, DFS Army YouTube channel. And what I noticed is there's only like four or five actual viable quarterbacks on this slate, and and we, we start to think about it, the QB position has been kind of weird this season. It's, I mean, the scoring on the whole is down. We're down to, right now, an average of 42 points per game, which is like the, the early 90s type of scoring. I What's mean, we just haven't seen, yeah, we just haven't seen it. And yeah, we were talking about it earlier, and, and people have asked me about it too. I mean, I think it's just the quarterback play, and like you, you were talking about, because you've now taken away two of the elite quarterbacks have been removed right now, and that's Rodgers and Brady, right? So those two guys are no longer, at least right now, you know, Brady, I think, uh, or, or Rodgers, I think, potentially could get there. I think Brady's the one I'm, I'm more concerned with. First of all, he's a lot older. And second, he's got no offensive line. Forget the wide receivers. He's got no offensive line. That's really struggling, uh, killing them right now. I, I think Brady without Gronk, and then you take away Godwin, and then you took away Evans. I said this after the first game. The the amount the number of weapons just aren't enough right now for Brady and, and I think Gronk is the is the real one that he's missing from a fantasy points and fantasy scoring perspective because Gronk did so many things and he's a touchdown guy um you know Mike Evans kind of replaces that but without the Godwin in there I just think that they're going to struggle I mean you bring Hurt Leo Jones in there that, that's basically as good as not having anybody so um I think Brady can turn it around when Evans comes back and when Godwin. I, I don't think Aaron Rodgers is turning around. He just doesn't have good weapons to throw to on his team. But that you know, but you know, he still has better overall team play than what Tom Brady has. Obviously, crushed that bet on the Packers this past week. So let's get right into it. We're going to take a look at each game, both from a betting lines and DFS angles perspective here, and it starts with the first game. Actually, I'm going to, I'll bring this up on the Sharp.app website, but the first game here 
that I want to take a look at is Buffalo at Baltimore. And, and for me, this is the ultimate. This is the shining star game on this slate, John. Um, from a DFS perspective, 51 and a half point total. The two best quarterbacks on the slate facing off against one another. Two teams that I think have the best chance. Like, you know, these are real emerge from the AFC and go to the Super Bowl contending teams, Buffalo and Baltimore. And, you know, they're basically two very close to can't fail quarterbacks in a game like this in Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson. So this is a really, really game to pay attention to this week from the Buffalo angle. And, and I'm going to talk just a little bit of DFS here from the Buffalo angle, obviously digs uh, Gabriel Davis returns. Isaiah McKenzie breaks out last week, but still hanging out around a 50% um, snap count. So don't get too crazy with Isaiah Mack. And, you know, Dawson Knox healthy. They have a full healthy, you know, group of weapons on Baltimore. And my goodness, not 11 targets for Devin Singletary in week last week. Where did that come from? I don't trust that to happen again, John. That uh, yeah. now, you know, I, I, I just never trust the running backs in, uh, in Buffalo. That's like the, the one you, you love getting pieces of Buffalo, but the running backs just always drive me crazy there. A lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, Allen's kind of vulturing some touchdowns from you as well at the goal line and and they don't really have a, a, a bell cow type of type of back. So, so yeah, the running back situation it, there, I did see, you know, they use Singletary quite a bit, but you know, that'll be a one week thing. And then this well, week you won't see it. I do want to throw this out there. Maybe they gave up on the bullshit they were doing the first couple of weeks because last season towards the end, they were just like, you know what? Screw all these scrubs. Let's just go with Devin Singletary. And it worked pretty well. Like, and Devin Singletary was producing really good numbers. So, what if this was the actually was the beginning of a trend? We have to wait another week. We got to give it another week. DraftKings priced the salary up in a crazy place. You can't can't go there. Well, they but also I didn't do well last week as a team, so that could leave a little bad taste. Like maybe we got to go back to what we were doing. You know, the I don't defense. Know. Singletary did well, and, and he did. But the Miami yeah. defense really played as well as anyone's played against uh, this team. So. Um, it was so hot, you the know. Oh, they were cramping like crazy. It was yes. got every, I think every offensive player at some point was getting an IV, uh, maybe outside of Allen, um, on the bench. So, yeah, I mean, I'm well aware of the heat down here and humidity, uh, and they just weren't handling it well coming from, coming from John. By the way, I like that you're hanging in there with the hurricane bearing down on the west There's coast, hurricane coming in Florida. Yeah, we're just starting to get breezy now, so uh, hopefully, you know, at least. For where I am, we get a Jenny. Uh, we're getting it a little south. Get, get a generator. Better I know. Yeah, the yeah the generator is the way to go for sure. Got to get a Jenny. All right. So, um, on the flip side of this game, we're going to talk betting angles in a second because this is I I'm, I don't know, right? Tougher one. Um, I do have an angle here, but it's a tougher game. But the flip side, Baltimore, Lamar Jackson. Wow, right? He is on fuego to start the season. Multiple forty plus point fantasy uh, performances. Uh, last week at almost no ownership, takes down the Millie Maker, uh, the the Lamar Jackson to Mark Andrews stack that no one played for, no one played it. Um, tough matchup, whatever. And it's a reminder that there's no such thing as a tough matchup when it comes to Baltimore. They play such a an oddball version of an NFL offense that, that I don't think any traditional great defense is really necessarily going to be able to slow them down. Like they will be slowed down at times. But we, I don't think we'll be able to truly predict when those occasions will happen. So um, it's expensive, but Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews, a 50% target share last week. Um, you know, Andrews is great. He is the number one tight end in football, currently um, doing better and sort of uh, above Travis Kelsey, really, um, even though Kelsey's also spectacular. Um, the other two interesting pieces from both, we can't touch the running game. But the other two interesting pieces, of course, Rashad Bateman, but Devin Dunvernay, guy catches a touchdown every week. Two targets, one touchdown. I, I, I'm i off it. I'm off, and Now it's starting to suck me in. It's starting to suck me in, John. Every yeah, week I, a touchdown from the scrub. I know. I I haven't gotten sucked in yet, but uh, I, I don't know if I'm if I'm buying into it. But, yeah, you talked about Andrews. I, I You know, I, I was pretty close to the market on that as well. It, it did surprise me a little bit. Uh, because that New England deep, the one thing about New England is that their defense, or not New England, um, um, who do we have last? Yeah, they're at New England, Baltimore, New England. Yeah, the yeah. New England defense was uh, 
is not one that you really want to target against. But like you said, I mean, there, there just haven't been that many great options. And then at the tight end position, it's even worse than the quarterback position. So it's like you almost want to just take these top tight ends and then kind of figure out the quarterbacks because there's so few good quarterbacks you can get away with a cheaper quarterback. One nice thing about last week when you squeezed Lamar and and um, Andrews into your lineup, what ended up happening by default was you didn't have the money to spend on these dud running backs who didn't deliver at payout prices. So you wind up on these weird running backs as well. And that's how you take down the million. People are like, how did he win? Well, you know, the minute you started your lineup with Andrews and um, and Lamar, A, you probably weren't paying for uh, Stefan Diggs, dud. You probably weren't paying up for those wide receivers, but you also definitely weren't paying up for, you know, some of these running backs that underperformed. So it was like a by default situation where those lineups did even better because you were kind of forced to take, you know, some running back in the lower echelon price point that really like a Ramondre Stevenson who wound up just randomly having his occasional good game that he has. So that was really interesting. Now, this game is taking place in Baltimore, and most people would really consider the Bills to be the better all-around team compared to the Ravens. Um, going into the season, in your power rankings, by every measure, the Bills are a better all-around team, but the, the the line here is pretty close with the Bills at minus three and a half. Do you see any betting angles in this game um, that three and a half or the or the total at 51 and a half feels a little bit low for a game like this. Yeah, I, I don't know. This game scares me. I took Buffalo and I'm with you on this. Cause I know you'd like Buffalo. I did as I well. That. And to, there's a couple of games this week. One that we're not going to talk about the Thursday night game, but that just look a little, they look too easy. I hate games that look too easy. And maybe I'm just out of my mind because Baltimore's a quality team. I just think Buffalo's the, class of the entire NFL right now coming off a bad performance you kind of like the bounce back situation here I don't think Baltimore is in the same I don't think they're in the same class as Buffalo we'll find out this week I I, I could be totally wrong but I I really like uh the Buffalo side of this and then you know you look at the model or the the model likes it as well uh so the model's on the on Buffalo side but when I look at the bets that are coming in I mean it's it's crazy the the amount of bets on Baltimore uh, 85% of the, of the money on Baltimore, about 50% of the bets, but 80% or 85% of the money, which is a big, so the sharp I'm money, surprised at that. The you sharp money think, seems yeah. to be on the Baltimore side. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we're getting anything. I didn't look, um, cause we do get some info from an offshore sports book. If we got any sharp money on that game, uh, in particular, and the actual, the sharp money on that game is on the underside under 54 and a half where it was. So it has dropped since then, but right, that's where moved. the, uh, yeah. Yeah, so that, yeah, that's that line movement. Uh, you know, a couple of those features in the game center on Sharp App are great, but one of the big ones is line movement. And when you see the line moves a ton from 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 the opening, but you know, at some point that line moves enough that you want to start to shift back over to um, you know, to the side that it's moving against. Like you know, it was fifty four. The sharps are hammering the under at fifty one and a half. We might flip it. it, it yeah, it's over that that starts to be the value well, side. Where where people make the mistake is they'll see this the sharp, you know they look at that sharp report they see the sharp money came in like you said it was fifty four and a half sharps have numbers in mind the average Joe public does not right so the P Joe public looks at the game and they say do I like this to go over or under sharps go I like this under at fifty four and a half I like this over at fifty one or over at fifty nine you know they have numbers in their head of where they like it and you'll see. Certain lines or totals will move to a certain place, and then sharps will come in on the other side. Um, so you have to be careful when you see sharps betting at a 54 and a half, and then it gets down to like a 51 and a half. You probably lost the value that was there on the bet uh, because now we're, we're a little late, and sharps come in generally, they come in early, they try to pick off the best lines they can. So you got to be careful when you're betting. Yeah, watch that early movement, but yeah, don't get fooled by where the sharp money is once the line has moved. All right. So just final note on that game, DFS load up. Really, it's a game I want to build around this week uh, in DFS angles. There's no real running back risk. Uh, you know, again, Singletary could randomly do do it again. I guess it's, but he's very expensive. On on DraftKings, they priced him up like a real starting running back. So there's not there's not too much to love beyond that there. But that is a game. I'm looking to build DFS lineups around this week. And it's two of maybe three or it's just most of the viable quarterbacks on the slate are playing in that game. It's crazy.
All right. Let's move on. The second game in our core, John. This one's a shockingly high total for two seemingly mediocre teams. And I'm talking about Seattle at Detroit. 50-point total with Seattle coming in as a road four-and-a-half-point underdog. Now, John, I'm not used to seeing C- – like, we're not seeing 50-point game totals in general. And here's Seattle, a team with a very bad offense um, against – on the road. How are How is this a 50-point total? I, I, what is going on here? Well, the under was getting bet, so it actually has come down. That that was a consensus line, but it, it has come down um, a let little check, bit. So uh, now, let me check DraftKings here. Yeah, um, so I no, think it's forty-eight and a half. Are you getting? Um, I'm still seeing fifty. Might inside have, the uh, app, are you looking at DraftKings? I mean, I'm oh, we're on the website, so it might yeah, not yeah, update yeah. as fast as the app. That that might be. Yeah, it. so the app the app's a little bit quicker. So we're at like forty-eight and a half. Okay. Morning. So that was getting bet down. It opened at the 50. It's come down. Um, still a high total for the two teams. You never would. I mean, if we looked at this two weeks ago, we're like, this is never going to be a core. We're getting different core four. We had the same, uh, I don't know if you want to call it a problem, but the same thing last week. We're getting unique games because of the fact that there's just, there's not that many good games anymore. And you're not getting the elite quarterbacks. Um, there's just not as many out there to play. Uh, you, the, the the first game that we went over has two of them, so you knock two out in one game. Um, yeah, this is an interesting game. I mean, again, I don't know if the game stacking. I don't know if this is necessarily a game stacking uh, type of game. I don't know if I want to put my money on on uh, a Geno Smith, but from a betting from a betting angle, I don't have any. I don't have a uh, a bet on this game that I like um, right now. The money's coming in sixty forty. On the Detroit side, which I actually would have expected a little bit more money on Detroit myself, um, just because Detroit's played so well. The, the problem with Detroit is they just can't finish, and this is going back since last year. They've had opportunities to win games, just have not been able to finish. On the total, though, the money is coming in, at least that we're seeing. Now, this this was bet down, but all the money's coming in on the over, so that's kind of surprising. We're getting over 90% this of the is, money on the over right now. It, this is just bizarre, but you mentioned something, and I do want to bring this up. The return again of the QB plus one stack in the Millie Maker. Talking about all year. I, I even got made fun of by like, you know, Twitter bros who are like, yeah. oh, you still, you don't correlate. You had, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I'm not here talking out of my ass, bro. I, I back test things. I'll tell you, I didn't, I didn't know, if, you know, we talked, I thought we would see some higher scoring, but I mean, 42, basically DFS didn't exist when the league averaged 42 points a game. Right. So if we continue at that pace, which quite frankly, you know, I mean, if we There's finish nothing 43, stop 43 and a half, what's exactly what's going to stop it? There are no, right there are no quality um, quarterbacks riding in on a white horse. Dak is hurt. Um, he, he'll yeah. be back at some point, but like, you know, there's no white horse, white horse knight on shining armor that's going to come in for these teams and make them not suck. There's just too many bad quarterback teams and, and it's not ending. It, it, the, What's, the rookie class was terrible this year. The rookie class from last year is almost all failing except for Trevor Lawrence. So there's some weird shit going on. And what, but the other thing that's interesting is it's not like the running backs are crushing. No, the running you know, backs you're like, are terrible. It's like running backs I don't even want to use as a flex on DraftKings. Can't. So now I've got like low scoring games with the core, but I've got to use wide receivers. So yeah, I mean, it, it, if it's a low scoring game that the wide receiver is getting all the points. It's not going to be, you know, the, they're just not two or three wide receivers or and plus tight ends, ca- pass catchers, let's say, in the same game that are just viable. So yeah, you, you are almost looking at. Um, I mean, we've been you've been talking about it before I was, like you said, just taking taking the uh, quarterback with the pass catcher with it, no comeback, it, it, and it's been it's been solid. It's I'm telling I, you know I'll say it again because we get like I said we get we get comments ripping on this. What do you mean you don't correlate? Like I invented correlating, okay? I fucking rapped about correlating. It's we in had my a million, rap song. We had a millie maker do it this year. Yeah, so we had a millie maker. We take had someone make one. a million. It is correlated, but again, I still build game stacks in in what I call hybrid contests, where it's like a five hundred entry or a thousand or two fifty entry that size. But as you get to the gigantic one, you know, even the QB plus two, it just works less and less because you got to be perfect. And somebody will find the perfect combo that, you know, yeah, yeah, Stafford could go off and, and 
Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson could have good games, but that combination just didn't work. You know, the double. So it seems to be happening more and more. All right, taking a look at this specific game, because we just talked strategy instead of actually discussing the specifics of the game. Jamal Williams chalk week is nigh. Okay? Jamal Williams price all the way up. It doesn't even matter. I think Jamal Williams might be the best running back play on the slate, regardless of salary, as weird as that sounds. You know, he's been a touchdown machine. He is super cheap. Swift out of the way. They they have a backup running back for pass catching role, but Jamal Williams is really good at catching passes too. So I think we're looking at 20 plus touches for Jamal at home against the Seattle defense. That's quote unquote, not good. So I don't see any reason not to load up on Jamal. As a matter of fact, last week I told you that I felt like bad chalk with Montgomery and, and it, it did work out that way. Like you had to play kind of Montgomery and, and Fournette, especially in your cash game, but it felt, it felt gross because Montgomery is on the bears and always disappoints. And, and, you know, there was that tough matchup for Fournette. This feels like good chalk to me, John. Yeah. A hundred percent. hundred. You can run on the Seattle team. Now you're down to, you know, they've got Reynolds right backing them up, but you, you got to expect a heavy dose. I mean, listen, Williams was getting all the touches down by the goal line or, or a good chunk He's already of them anyway. Work. Yeah. So, so you got to love this situation. Decent it, price, 6,100. Uh, I like this chalk play. Yeah, it, it's it's rough. Uh, listen, don't play the chalk. Do what you got to do. But this feels like really, really good chalk to me. Um, you know, I'm in Ra's sun god. Um, he's, he's killing it this year too. 30 plus that, percent. That might have been his floor last week. It was the worst which game. You'll in, take, which yeah, you'll take. He, he, I love him. Love him. He got banged week. up a little bit. He got banged up. We, yeah, we have to check on the on on that situation. Um, TJ Hawkinson not been doing it at all, and probably not someone I'm actively looking to force into any kind of lineups. Um, I don't think Goff is is viable really either. I maybe, but not really. Right there, um, Goff is the most interesting thing to me about Goff would be as a pivot off of Jamal. Like it's one or the other for me. Like, if you want leverage off of the Jamal chalk, that's how you get it. You're like, Goff, Amin Ra, no Jamal. Amin Ra catches three touchdowns. Goff throws for a fourth one because some other turd catches one. And, and um, you know, Jamal doesn't do anything and burns 50% of lineups in giant tournaments. That is an interesting GPP leverage approach. But, you know, everybody else just load up on Jamal. Is there anything from Seattle that interests you? Um, let's see. I mean, I, I'm going to say, for me, on the DFS angle, Rashad Penny is a little bit interesting. Detroit, very bad defensively. Rashad Penny, an actual real-life good running back, and no one's going to play him. 50-point total. So that that's the one that interests me just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's, it's a decent play. I mean... I'll have, I'm, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to mix this game in a little bit. So I'll have, you know, I'll have my shares of the, of, uh, of the wide receiver, you know, I'll have a little bit of locket and, but nothing, nothing that I would go crazy on. No, no, a fan of tight end if you want to get cheap potentially, but, uh, yeah, there's nothing here that I would say is an absolute must play. Yeah. Um, I agree. And, and, you know, DK Metcalf's priced up. It's in a crazy place. I don't want to mess with that. Uh, it's Geno Smith. Don't get excited about the passing offense of Seattle. Again, I like the under in this game. I don't get it. I don't see where these two teams are going to score over 50 points. Could be wrong. <clears throat> I could see the Lions actually dominating this game. I think Seattle on the road is just less good. They're they're much better at home. Um, they're just less good of a team on the road. So um, give me Detroit. Give me the under. Um, and give me Amon Ra. Give me Jamal. Give me all those pieces. Um, Sun God as well, but certainly Jamal. Good chalk. All right. Before we move on, we've got two more games left in the core four, but I want to talk about our sponsor, Thrive Fantasy. Um, Thrive Fantasy has been with us throughout the season, sponsoring the show. We love them for it. But they've also put together a really awesome deal for anybody who's watching the show. If you want to check out, so basically what they're doing, um, Thrive is a prop site. You bet the over, under, you bet the game totals, that kind of thing, and Take a look at the contest they're running every single week. 125K guaranteed um, tournament style over under contest. And when you sign up at Thrive with promo code ARMY, they're giving free tickets to enter this contest. So 
They're going to deposit match you up to $200 with promo code ARMY. But more importantly, it, uh, a deposit of $100 or more gets you two tickets, $25 each, to enter their big uh, NFL Week 4 125K guaranteed tournament. Now, here's how this contest works. It's very simple. You go through. You pick, um, you pick a bunch of these props to enter the contest. You're going to pick 10 out of the 20 options. And whoever scores the most points in the tournament wins the tournament. It's really that simple. You're going to pick 10 out of 20. My one little piece of, uh, let's say, strategy advice is try to pick the bigger numbers. So if you're trying to win this tournament and take it down, you want to pick the larger numbers. So I, the way I do it is I go through these props and I look for ones that like have a better chance of giving me over 100 points. So uh, here's a really interesting one, John. I wanted your opinion on this, right? So you're entering this giant tournament. It's on Thrive. And first place, all or nothing. When we enter GPPs, you know, what do we say? Either a win or a, 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 I'm out. So Leonard Fournette has a 145 point over for one and a half total touchdowns, meaning if he scores two touchdowns in this game, he hits this over. Now that one over is, is good for like, two of these uh lower priced props so if you hit this it really puts you at a major edge and no one's going to pick it because it's obviously much more likely that he doesn't put up two touchdowns in a game so from a gpp perspective like uh is this are you are you looking at a contest like this going yeah give me those crazy uh, over like i definitely would be on this sh sh uh schuster smith uh, Smith Schuster under, for example, I'm taking the 125. This guy's not hitting 42 yards every single week. I, I need the bigger numbers. But how do you approach a contest like this, John? Yeah, I think that's what you have to do is is look at where the um, where the bigger points are. Right, look for the ones these these. I mean, you, I think you pointed out a great one with the 145. I don't, I don't think I've seen one. That's the largest one I was. Obviously, yeah. it's the longest shot that you're sure. you're really going to see. That's why it's 1.5. But you're trying to take down you. Know, what people don't understand is you're trying to take down a GPP. Meaning, as the moment you enter it, the odds are pretty good you're not winning it, right? I mean, you've got a one in actually 10, in this one. In fairness, this one only only gets like half full, so you have a much higher shot of cashing yes. in this than than in any other contest in DFS. But I it think your but your mindset in GPPs is always like you know it's I'm 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 a dog. I don't care who you are. You're the best player in the world you're a dog to win these things. I mean, obviously it's really, really hard to win. So the more, the, the more difficult it is to win something, the more risk you have to take. So you have to take something like that where, I mean, do we expect for to get two touchdowns? No. Is it possible? Absolutely. It's possible in a game like that. I mean, like we could get a bunch of scoring in that game and, and he gets the two. So you have to look at it from that standpoint. Um, it's what I tell people in, in GPPs and in, in DFS is, can't always you, you can't just always play what you think is going to happen. You have to play what the market doesn't think is going to happen, even yeah. if it's even that's if it's really, contrary to what you think. That's a really good way of putting it. Where the market doesn't, not that you think it will or it won't, but the market thinks it won't. So I love that way of putting it. And guys, check out Thrive. It really is a, a great little contest, but they're giving you a ton of value with the deposit match and the free tickets to enter this massive, uh, massively overlaid contest. It, it's a no-brainer. And at DFS Army, of course, we have our player prop models. Uh, our, our player projections are broken down, very specific yards, touchdowns, receptions. So you can compare those against these props to help give you an idea of which side is the value side. And of course, Thrive also has the same style prop games against the house, against head-to-head -head and that kind of thing. So um, a lot of different ways to play over there. Make sure you check it out. And we appreciate them sponsoring this show. All right. Moving on, the third game in our core four this week is another weird one that you'd be surprised has such a high total. Cleveland heading out to Atlanta in a game with a 49.5 point total. And Cleveland are road one and a half point favorites. But John, I I I real I just man, are the are the sharps hammering the under here? What is going on? Cleveland is never part of a game that plays to the over like that team runs the football. They play slow and kind of, so does Atlanta. What is going on here? That is <laughs> what am I missing? I'm, I'm with you on this as well. I mean, these games are just, they're wacky to me. And usually when I can't figure it out, I hate to go against 
my, I hate to go against something that looks too looks too easy or looks looks odd to me. You know, and here you have, I mean, Mariota against uh, against Jacoby Brissett, and you're like, this is one of the top games as far as the totals go for the for and, and uh Cleveland's for gonna plate. just run the football and milk the clock. They can't score quickly. Every score takes you know seven, eight minutes of clock, long drives. I what is going on here? Up is down, left is right. Yeah. Cats and dogs living together. It's complete chaos. What happened was early, you know, this this actually got bet up because what this was way lower. I think it opened about 45 and the sharps came in and hit it to the over. And it's been progressively. I'm just looking at where the money is coming in now on the total, and it's it's all come in on the over. Now I think a lot of that was on the way up here. Maybe not necessarily at this 49 and a half. As a matter of fact, it's starting to come down from the 49 and a half down and to using, 48 and a half. You're using betting betting handles data from Sharp App. I'm using to, the Sharp App betting handles data. Yeah. yeah. The key with this though is you need to look at it every day and kind of get a feel, right? So right now we're at 80 percent, 88 percent of the money coming in on the over. If tomorrow we're at 70% of the money coming in on the over, that's going to give you a good idea that it's actually under money coming in at these levels, right? Because oh, the price yeah, has changed. Shifting back. Right. Yeah. So, because we were at 45, and at 45, the sharps hit it to the over. The money came in on the over, but now we may be sitting with over money from a lower uh, total. So, you got to track it on a daily basis to really give yourself a good idea of where the market is. But um, yeah, the tools are phenomenal and, and really helpful in. in uh, if so, you're going to handicap I mean, and pick these games, do you have a betting angle here? I was kind of thinking, um, I'm leaning, I'm leaving, leaning Cleveland. Um, I just not seeing like I, I see these two teams as kind of similar, but you know the 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 Browns probably slightly better team. A um, couple of weird losses for them, taking that Jets crazy loss and whatnot. I'm I'm leaning Cleveland here. I think the running game can do its its thing. This looks like a game I'm gonna. This is gonna be one of my uh, teaser uh, bets, and but I, I'll take Atlanta and the points. So if I can get this at one and a half or two, I'd like to tease it up to seven and a half or eight. Oh, that's a big and yeah. I like that. You know what I mean? Because I like crossing that three and the seven on the teaser bets. Uh, I see. Uh, I see. I see so many people, especially in our Discord. They're like, "Do you like this?" But they take an alternate line, or they take a teaser, and they and they'll take like Cleveland, let's say at plus two, or uh, I'm sorry, Cleveland at minus two, and they'll tease that. They'll tease the Cleveland side, and it's like you're wasting. Games don't end on two. They don't end on one. They don't end on zero. They don't end on the other one. They don't end on the other two. Like you wasted a whole bunch of points to get yourself to four on the other side. So all you gained was the three. Yeah. Right. On so you're paying when, a lot for it. Yeah. So I'd much rather have Atlanta plus eight as opposed to Cleveland Makes plus sense. three or See, four. It's like the same bet, but the flip side. This doesn't. This game doesn't project as like one of these teams blowing the other one out of the water. So you're almost kind of like saying. Hey, I just it's cheaper for me to push Atlanta to the past the seven mark, and that's that magic number in a game like this. We're essentially just betting the game ends within seven points. I don't that's care right. who wins. Um, right. Really, uh, I like it. Fascinating from the mind of uh, of uh, you know a top sports better. So, um, looking at this game from a DFS angles perspective, this is not you know it's a tough one. It's tricky, but there are some pieces that are interesting, but nothing like explodes off the screen and like, I must play this, right? Even in a 50-point total, uh, on the Cleveland side, Amari Cooper coming off a really good week, great. Could he do it again? Absolutely. He was the focal point of his offense. I don't have the target share number like directly in front of me to share it, but I would imagine it is um, uh, over 30% last week, maybe even 35% target share for Amari Cooper. And he just looked good. Br Brissett was, you know, it was fine, right? Um, Nick Chubb, never a guy I love to play in DFS. And I might not, I don't think I could play him this week. I didn't play him in the big week. Um, I think it was week two where he went off for 33 points, uh, three touchdowns. I, I don't know if that was last week or two weeks ago, but I did not play him. I missed it and I'll accept it. But the reason I didn't play him is even more dramatic this week. Nick Chubb is not a, a new phenomenon. We know who he is and what he does, right? At 6,500, he needed to score three touchdowns in that game to make GPP winning value on DraftKings. He was 6,500, right? Six, 12, 18, 24, 27 fantasy points, 4X value. It took three touchdowns for him to get there. Now they've got him priced all the way up. So Nick Chubb is not 6,400. He is 7,900 on, on DraftKings. And 9,400 on FanDuel. 
So to, to understand this, Nick Chubb needs to produce 8, 16, 24, 32 fantasy points on DraftKings with no receptions because they don't throw to him. He needs to get to 32 fantasy points. You're talking three touchdowns and probably 100 yards of rushing. Okay, that's 13, 6, 12, 18. That gets you to 29. That, that, that expectation is absolutely bonkers, John. It's bonkers. He needs three touchdowns and 100 plus yards in this game where he's splitting with Kareem Hunt. He's not even the whole, he's not even the workhorse. Well, the only thing you do have to be careful with, with looking for that, um, you know, 30 points from the bag is we may not need that many from running backs the way it's been going. So, but I mean, you still need a lot from you, Chubb. I, you I get cannot waste a pay up on a guy. It doesn't have to be a running back, but you only have so many pay ups in your, in your arsenal. You waste it on, and he gets 21. You're not winning the tournament. You are not winning a million. I think you could full phase Nick Chubb. I, I, it's as crazy as it sounds. He's been the best running back in the league. I think you could full fade him on both sides this week because FanDuel's equally egregious. They priced him as the highest price running back on the slate. 9,200, 9, 18, 27. You're asking for 30 FanDuel points out of Nick Chubb. I don't even think he's got that in him. So I am fading the Chubb. No Chubb for the geek. No Chubb for the geek. Story of my life. Mrs. Geek is not happy about it. No, she's very happy. Her famous <laughs> saying is, let someone else get nauseous. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, boy. Life. All right. Um, Atlanta side, you know, Pitts, Drake London, Cordero Patterson, big week last week. He's priced up also. It's tough to not. I don't know what to do with Cordero Patterson, to be honest with you. Like, he's just all over the place. Where does he cut all these carries from? Where are the targets? They're not coming, but he does produce. I think they've settled on just playing the shit out of Cordero. Let's ride him. So I think he's playable, um, but certainly. I, yeah, I, I'm I'm not, uh, you know, I know he had a monster week, but I'm I'm concerned with actually the amount of targets. Like he's just not getting the targets. The targets the aren't there. game. So he, is he going to run for 141 every week? No. But yeah. the targets need to be there. Um, one here's a big one on this game. There are almost no pay down options at running back in DFS this week. Almost none. Almost none. Right. So my question is, can we take a chance and, and Mariota stay the hell away from him in any sort of a tournament environment, um, or in or in any sort of cash game environment, right, where you're looking for solid production, but. I have this weird feeling like Mariota has not done it yet. He's throwing 22 times a game. The 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 target numbers are low, um, but we've seen some hints. In week one, we saw him run for 70 plus yards, right? He hasn't run much in weeks two and three, but in week run, one, he did it. Last season, we saw him produce big fantasy scores coming in as a backup um, in certain games. So I know he's got it in him. Can we take a shot in tournaments on Marcus Mariota saving two to three K in salary over the Lamar Jackson, um, Jalen hurts, Josh Allen group, right? You're saving a lot. So we don't have to match them. All we need to do is kind of come close. He probably needs about a 25 fantasy point performance to be in the, in the discussion. Can Marcus Mariota get there? He hasn't really passed 14 or 15 points this year. Yeah, he could, he could get there. And as a matter of fact, I would, if you really want to get crazy with your lineup and you're looking at a, something unique, you can almost throw a Mariota um, naked lineup out there. I I don't mind it. Not that I'm, you know, it's it's not my favorite lineup, but I like it for trying to be unique, get a cheap quarterback in there, and then use uh, some of the more expensive pieces with it because he's got the potential to score a couple of touchdowns for you. Like, he, you know, I don't think he's going to throw 300 yards in this game, but this is a game he can score two touchdowns, get you some running yardage, and then become – you know, he might not be the top quarterback scorer, but at the price, you don't need him to be. No, he he just needs, like I said, he. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into this deep in the Players Club on Saturday that I do for DFS Army VIPs, our our sort of bring it all together DFS breakdown because I like to sort of decipher what everybody's gonna do and then figure out ways we can be a little bit different in in certain contest types. But 
you know, everybody's doing the same thing at quarterback. They're playing one of the big three, and it's probably Josh Allen, but it might be Lamar, it might be Hurts, but they're playing one of those three. Um, so when you make a change at the quarterback position to a Mariota, who's probably going to suck, but if he doesn't, <laughs> you know, if he doesn't suck, then what you end up with is a scenario where um, Mariota allows the rest of your lineup to be really, really unique and different. Um, yeah, that's mo that's mostly it for this game. So moving on. Game number four of the core four. We've got Buffalo. No, we already nope, did Buffalo. We got Baltimore. that one. No, no, it's Eagles game. Where is that? Yeah, here we go. We've yep. got the Eagles at home taking on the Jaguars. Eagles six and a half point favorites, 48 point game total on this one. Now, John, the Eagles' offense has been spectacular. Their defense is pretty good. But Jacksonville, are they better than we thought? Where is Jacksonville today on your power rankings? After the win, they've it's dominated pretty... their opponents. Yeah, they're, the rankings, they're right now, this is all based on the numbers, but they're ranked way higher than you would have imagined. Uh, imagine, but teams that are what if you're right, though? What if the but numbers... But they very well may be. Yeah, they're, they're ranked fourth. And quite oh frankly, God. I mean... You know, you start looking at these other teams. Is anyone really that? Is anyone that great? Like, I thought Jacksonville. I had three teams, and so far it's early. Two of the three that I thought were good value uh, early in the season you had were the Eagles, Jacksonville, yeah, Philly, you were all over the Eagles in the preseason, and yeah, Philly, and then the, the one that I'm, I'm who knows, it, it could still turn out to be okay was New England, but it's not looking very good. Um, but that was the other team I thought had some value as well. Um, but yeah, I so I'm. I, I like to look for the young quarterbacks that have a potential chance, whether it's a rookie, second year quarterback, who's going to take that step up. And um, and I kind of put Hertz in that category as well, even though he had the he was pretty good last year. I thought he was going to take a big step up. He has. That's where you're going to find value when you're betting on futures in the NFL, because especially in, in today's NFL, because you really need a court, you need a young, really good quarterback. Um to win the Super Bowl. Now I know Matt Stafford just won and you got Brady, but there's unique situations. The Brady situation always because he takes a little bit less money, makes the team better, but it's very difficult for these teams now who are paying running backs or quarterbacks to really put that, that great team on the field. So a lot of times I like to look for the young quarterback and Lawrence uh, is that, and we know what a mess they were last year. So that was my logic behind uh, thinking that they might be some value, but they've been really good. And now you're playing Philly, who might be the best team in football right now. I mean, who knows, right? I, I still think it's Buffalo, but boy, Phillies look really good. And, you know, the weird thing about them as far as the game so far is like they've gotten like Hertz has been dominant. He's been great, but they've got they've gotten leads and they've sort of been able to sit on them. So they've scored early and then they've been able to sit on these leads. So the score like last week was just a low scoring game. The week before was a low scoring game only because they didn't need to. Um, and he was still putting up a ton of points. So I don't know. I think I, I'm sensing this week, though, you're going to get a little bit more resistance from uh, from Jacksonville than you did with Washington last week. I think the number's a little high. I don't love the game to either side. We're not seeing uh, – I don't believe we're getting anything uh, as far as any sharp money on this game either way or on the total that we have not seen anything as of yet. And um, when I look at the model – in the app, it it does think Jacksonville's getting a, a few more points than it should, uh, which is understandable. I, I think yeah, I think the I, same thing. I, I think the model. I, I'd be shocked if the AI was not leaning Jacksonville in this it game yeah. based on yeah. how good it's done, and and it's the correct play. Your your power rankings like Jacksonville. The models like Jacksonville because yeah, they've played well. They just put a beating on the. They they put a beating like we excuse the beating they put on the Colts. Right, we excused it. Oh, you know, Colts are weird. They always yeah, lose in Colts, Jacksonville. Yeah, okay. they don't play them well. They, yeah. they don't play them well. So we're like, eh, right? And then they just put a beating on the Chargers, and we're all like, well, you know, Herbert was kind of hurt going into the game. Enough with the excuses. I think what's going on is maybe, and again, could be wrong, it might be that Jacksonville isn't bad. Maybe Lawrence, uh, maybe that team was coached by the worst co head coach in the history of the NFL, Urban Meyer, last season. Um, maybe they're just not as bad as people thought. Maybe the Christian Kirk move that we all laughed at actually was good. He's playing well, and he's playing like an actual starting wide receiver. Now, that being said, this Eagles secondary 
is very, very good. Darius Slay, James Bradbury are both locked down corners. So I think that Jacksonville is going to have a hard time throwing to the outside. doesn't matter that much. Um, you know, they're not, you know, Kirk is uh, operating out of the slot plenty anyway. I think he's, he'll be fine. Um, James Robinson has looked like a beast. No one thought this would happen. And Travis Etienne's actually a nice little weapon, even if he's not um, producing incredible fantasy production for us. So they have a lot of weapons. I think their defense in Jacksonville might be a little bit better than we thought as well. Uh, you know, there's there's a lot of things happening with this Jacksonville team. I feel like there's a lot of uncertainty around it. I would definitely be on the Jacksonville side of the bet, even though going against Philly seems really stupid because they're absolutely destroying every opponent that they're going up against. I'd probably lean towards no bet, quite honestly. I don't want to be rooting against the Eagles uh, and that offense, so I'd probably lean no bet over anything. But um, from a DFS angle, I think Jalen Hurts remains one of the better options on the slates. I like the players on the Eagles side a little bit better than the Jacksonville side. I don't really trust the Jacksonville side. Eagles defense is good, but you know, I don't know if you feel differently, but AJ Brown fine by me. Um, you know, Devonta Smith monster week last, by the way, we thought he, Smith couldn't play with hurts. No. And hurts as a quarterback. How, how does somebody improve that much in the off season? It is amazing what the Eagles are doing right now. Very, very impressed. And and I think the quarterback is looking like more and more like they found their franchise guy. Uh, there's, there's no doubt about that. I think AJ Brown's one of the better, uh, has one of the better matchups this week. Um, so if you look at, uh, if you, if you look at his matchup against all the, the uh, D backs on Jacksonville, it's just really favorable. And it's one of the top ones of the week on the other side of the ball, the, the Jacksonville matchups, as you mentioned, not as great. So I really like the AJ Brown side of this. And you can't not like Hertz. Yeah, um, he's in the big three, although I've already done my notes for the quarterback position for DFS Army um, VIPs. And I will spoiler alert that Hertz is my least favorite of the what I call the elite three this week. I think kind of what you mentioned is a real possibility that, you know, the Eagles just come out and they kind of go take a lead or, or they're able to kind of play defense and and limit the scoring of Jacksonville to the point where they're not pedal to the metal second half of the game. I think he's still going to have a good game, but like a 23 from Hertz is going to be a disappointment because you're going up against your price, the same as Allen and Lamar. So essentially it's just a, it's a, it's basically an over under prop of which of these three quarterbacks will score the most points this week. They're all the same price, Allen Hertz and Lamar. And you're just guessing which one's going to be the best. I, I think Hertz is the least likely to put up the biggest score of the trio, but there's another scenario that I, you know, a gambling scenario that I once um, heard where essentially because Lamar and Josh Allen are part of the same game environment, that the sharpest play would be to take the player who's not from that game environment, because if the game environment fails, it would bring the two of them down together. I don't know how relevant that is. I, you know, there's a, there's a whole other weird you know, gambling thing that I've seen about which door to choose. And, you know, I don't know. I can't even repeat it. The Monty Hall, the Monty Hall. Uh, it, it's problem. some, I will talk off air. I, you have to refresh me on it. But um, as far as this game goes, do you see any, uh, like that choice goes in DFS this week? Cause we're going to get away from the core. We're going to go to the regular games, but the DFS choice this week, where you have those three quarterbacks, the elite three, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, same game. And then Jalen Hurts. From a DFS and from sort of a, just a gambling perspective, if I'm if I'm making a straight bet with you, John, hey, which one of these three guys will score the most fantasy points this week? Is there some benefit to going with the guy who's not part of the same game environment? Or would you say that's really because one QB in that game can do well and the other one cannot, so it doesn't matter? Yeah, from a straight like if we're just betting it even up, probably not. I would I would take one of the ones in the two in the in that in that there game. You know. But from a GPP standpoint. You're 100% correct. Well, you're only talking if ownership is different. The ownership on Hertz is higher than the ownership right now. Yes. On, so it doesn't it But doesn't the work. game, but I don't know if the game stack, like if you're looking at game stack, I think, I, and again, I, I don't know if Hertz is the, the, way I, the way I would go, but what I was thinking more of is, um, and I wanted to mention it in the, in the Buffalo game, was if I'm single entry or three, you know, three maxing, something like that, I would stay away from that game totally. Right, and you should be doing that every week. You should be staying away from whatever the biggest game is, whatever the yeah, game whatever, looks whatever the obvious. when you're saying it. Just get away, you know. Yeah. And we're talking GPP, we're not talking cash. So you you should just automatically 
<clears throat> be getting off. And quite frankly, that's that's been doing well. It's not like, you know, the biggest game of the week has not been crushing. Uh, so you're probably going to wind up finding yourself the biggest game. So not only is it working uh, from a game theory standpoint, but it's actually working in reality where the, the top games just haven't been that good. We just so saw I would last be looking week. elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, we just saw last week. Um, Buffalo, Miami played to the under, right? Um, that game didn't produce big scores to almost any of the fantasy pieces. Uh, you know, Stefan Diggs was the chalk. Uh, Tyreek Hill was the chalk. None of it really yeah, worked. And not play well. And and you know what was interesting in that game is similar to this game today is the defense. Now we knew the Buffalo defense was solid. We know how great the Buffalo defense. Now they were banged up, so there was a little question. Well, they're going to be banged up. Turned out they played well defensively, and so did Miami. Both teams now Miami moved improved in my rankings dramatically off that game. But you look at this week, you've got the Philly and Jacksonville. It's Philly's the number two defense behind Buffalo, and Jacksonville's number five. So no reason in the environment that the NFL is in right now that this isn't a twenty to seventeen game, and we're just not getting all excited because it's like as good as Hertz has been. We talked about it. They haven't been you know scoring a ton of points, so I could see this game being low scoring, tight. And just not being worth it in uh, fantasy, you know, it's really difficult to play against two of the best defenses, and that's yeah. one of our core four games. It's just such a unique season that's going on right now. Absolutely, um, yeah. And and again, that that Jacksonville defense, no one knows that they're fourth best. Yeah, that's not the expectation. They when have not see- been good to stack, and Philly has not been great stacks. It's just that you're getting the Hurts running uh, running attack, yeah, which is what's absolutely. helping. But from a passing standpoint, both of these teams have not been great. I wouldn't get crazy on the game. Uh, I agree. And, and those defenses, again, more so the Philly defense, it's hard to throw against the Eagles, and they're just limiting opposing quarterbacks. Um, and the reason I don't kind of see the same thing going on with that Buffalo game is, again, because Baltimore is just such a weird offense that it doesn't really matter how good your defense is. They can, they can beat it because they do weird things. Um, all right, so that does it for the core four games of the week. Um, now we're just going to get into all the rest of the games. We're going to do a, a, a brief breakdown, and I'm going to rapid fire these with you, John. So let's let's we're going to hammer through them, right? Um, first game: Chargers, Houston, forty-four and a half point total. Houston home, four and a half point underdog. Chargers coming off the loss. We don't know what the deal is with Herbert. I assume that he'll be healthier now. A week, an, an extra week removed from that injury. Um, John, you see any betting angles here? Uh, Chargers on the road seems like um, a spot to to lay the lay the points. I got this early in the week at seven, so you're not going to see that again. I took it at the plus. At you took plus, plus seven. Took yeah, Houston I took plus, plus seven. seven with Houston. Yeah, I've been I've been on Houston. I was on Houston the first two weeks. I did not have them last week, so uh, it's been the one team that. It, uh, I mean, I've been my picks have been pretty good so far this year, and 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 that's been the one team I've nailed uh, in the two bets that I've. I've had with them. We'll see if we can keep that that run going. Uh, but I do like Houston uh, at the five. I don't know. I don't like it nearly as much at the at the price it's at now. Um, but when I got it earlier, so now, yeah, four and a half looks a little light to me. But the thing is, we don't listen. That's a lingering injury. It's one of those where you're not going to get more injured, which is why he played last week. Even though I thought he should not have gone out there and played. Um, to me, it's like let him rest, and you're going to need him down the stretch. You, you should have been able to at least give it a game against Jacksonville. Um, and they, they weren't able to do that with Herbert. He didn't look, you know, if you looked at it, some of the passes, didn't look typical uh, Herbert. He couldn't really, when he really had to step in and, and, and zip one in, he didn't quite have it. That's a, that's just a, it's a tough injury. And unfortunately there's not much you can do about it. Uh, from a betting standpoint, the money right now, it's 60, 40 on the uh, coming in on the Chargers side, both the uh, tickets and the money. And then we're seeing it dramatically a lot more on the under in this game. Yeah, I can see that under um, coming through. I I did I did bet the Charger side of this, so we're against each other. But at minus four and a half, yeah, so we, could, we could we could middle it. We could middle this one. I, but I do like the Chargers. The the AI the the Skynet model uh, really likes the Chargers and thinks they should be significantly more favored than they are. And and again, you know, it's that injury that's kind of looming. We're not sure what the deal is, but this. Houston defense is really, really porous, especially against running backs. So I think there's a lot of room for, um, you know, for Eckler to have a big game or even some of these random secondary guys. I don't think I'm playing Eckler in DFS very much, but, you know, if you're ever going to do it, this would be the time. He, the volume's just not been there for him just in general to try to produce. His salary is a little high for me, but and he hasn't done anything this year, but that would be a guy I'd be interested in. If Keenan Allen is out, I'm also interested in Mike Williams. 
on the Chargers. For Houston, it's been rough going for their pass catchers. Brandon Cooks yet to have like a I needed to have rostered him type of a game this season. Uh, and Damian Pierce last week was great. We talked about him. Um, is the starting running back going to get all the work? I think he's playable here, even if he's priced up a little bit on um, in DFS on both DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, he's priced a little high for me, but still, Damian Pierce, 50, uh, high 5K on DraftKings, high 6K, I believe, on FanDuel, playable at those prices. All right, next up, we've got Titans at the Colts. 42 and a half point total on this one. Colts are at home, three and a half point favorites. And this is the battle of the elite running backs with Derrick Henry going up against Jonathan Taylor. Could it be a game, John, where both running backs go off? No, probably not. But um, one of them could uh, for sure. I think this might be the Jonathan Taylor week. I don't know. That Colts offensive line is just not looking that good this year. I believe they lost their uh, elite left tackle and it's just not been a good offensive line. Matt Ryan kind of disappointing getting, getting sacked nonstop. So um, it hasn't just looked very good on offense for the Colts, but maybe it was because maybe they're looking bad because they're facing better defense. Nah, I don't really think so. I don't really think so. John, any betting angles here um, to exploit? Well, the model likes the Tennessee side of this game. Um, I do as well. So, and I, I was kind of waiting, and now now that we're going through it, I missed it earlier. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump in on this because you could get three. You could actually, if you want to get the three and a half, it looks like Caesars has it at minus one twenty. If you want to pay a little extra and get the hook, which I think I might do. Um, the total's at forty three right now, and as far as the money coming in, it's pretty split on the game. So not no uh, no bias one way or the other from the public. We haven't seen anything sharp come in. Um, on the total or on this game as of yet, but the under is where the money is really coming in. So a lot more coming in, a lot more money coming in on the under sort of goes, it's kind of in line with what we were talking about uh, or what you were talking about. It could be a running back type of game, but you know, listen, Jonathan Taylor has been a, a killer. If you've, uh, if that was your number one pick right now, has not panned out in mm -hmm. season long leagues. L last couple of weeks haven't been great. Week one was pretty good for Taylor, but um, you know, you're, you're expecting elite production week after week. Jonathan Taylor was also a 10K salary player in week two on FanDuel so, uh, and, and on DraftKings, I think. So that salary is also coming down commensurate with uh, the product productivity. Jonathan Taylor is getting, getting all the volume, though. It'll, he'll have his, his weeks. We saw it with Derrick Henry last week. He hadn't had a good week and then until he did. Jonathan Taylor is still the same guy. He's going to have great weeks. Certainly sneaky to play him this week. You don't want to miss when Taylor has the 50 burger and he will get one. He just does that um, every year. So you don't want to miss it. Could it be this week? Yes. I think um, Derrick Henry is also in play. He can have another big week this week. There's no reason, nothing holding Derrick Henry back in this spot. As far as the rest of it, Tennessee, I don't think you could touch any of the wide receivers. But on the Colts, Michael Pittman is always going to be in play for me. I don't love it. You, you know, he's priced up to the elite elite tier. And, you know, I'm, he's not proven that he's worth or, or going to be like, I'd rather play Amon Ra, but there he is. Um, all right. Next up, we've got Washington at Dallas Cooper rush season. Is Dallas better with backup quarterbacks? No, but they're winning. Washington looking pretty good this year as well at the quarterback position. Wentz um, starting off the season well. And then he showed you classic Carson Wentz last week against the Eagles. And just and it, remember we talked about this, John, what did I tell you? I said on this show, I said, you know, Wentz is this guy that when he's, when he's down, he's like you don't get garbage time points. It just like goes bad. And then it, it's just a disaster. More interesting. It's like, it's like he mentally falls apart in games when it's not working out. And, and you told me, Hey, week one, he came back against Detroit. But we saw the version that I was afraid of this week where he just fell apart. And then it was like nothing. Where Come on. Can you throw it to Curtis Samuel? Thank goodness Curtis Samuel cashed that bet for me over four and a half receptions. Easiest money I've ever made. Easiest, John. The rare multi-unit prop bet because it was just so egregious. And all the Sharp App subscribers got that from your boy. That they did. We had a couple of big, uh, Anthony had a big five, 
five unit play winner on the uh, on the night game as well. The Sunday, the Sunday. Yes, night he did. Game. I think was it was the under game. or the over. Had the under, which yeah. was like you know eleven ten. We'll take that all day long. Yeah, it was never never in doubt. So yeah, we we crushed a couple of big uh, big bets this weekend. But yeah, for this game, the model the models uh, likes Washington here. Um, is it's the a tough one for me. I, I don't really. Uh, it's not a bettable game. For me, I won't be uh, I won't be jumping in on this one. From the cash standpoint, we're seeing um, three to one tickets on Dallas, but even split cash wise on the uh, on the spread, and then the majority ninety percent of the cash coming in on the under in this game. So I'm not I think people Dallas. are starting to bet unders. Oh, man, I mean. How crazy is it that they're betting the under on a 42 point total? But yeah, people are betting unders yeah. now. And it's like nobody likes to bet the unders, but it's just they've been so profitable that, you know, eventually the market has to catch up here. Maybe this is the week. But um, I have to but say, yeah, the unders have been profitable. I do like the Washington side of this game. I like getting those three points. I think it's a close game. And one of my one of my philosophies in betting in general is if I'm getting at least three on a team that I think has maybe 50 50 odds of winning the game, I want to take the three. I think Washington's probably about 50-50 to win this. They look bad coming off that rough game against the Eagles, but we knew they were going to get killed going to the Eagles. A, it was a horrible matchup. B, just the mental thing for Carson. He's a guy in his head already going back to the, you know, the the scene of the crime in Philadelphia for Carson. He, you know that wasn't going well. Come on, right? So this is not that, right? Dallas, not a great offensive team with Cooper Rush at the helm. Their defense is good, but it's not great. They beat up on the Giants. The Giants stink. So, so give me Washington. I'll take the three. Um, I'm going back to Curtis Samuel cheat code. Um, you know Terry McLaurin out there against um, Steffi Diggs, or uh, not Stephon Diggs, uh, Trayvon Diggs, Travy Diggs. I don't like that situation, but that leaves Jahan Dotson open on the other side. Um, yeah, I like the Washington side of this game, and I, I don't think you can play. Dallas pieces at all, like in DFS or anywhere. Uh, I would stay away from that. Um, Chicago at the Giants. Wow. A battle of the stink. Who's the stinkiest of the stinkers, John? Um, 39 point total. Giants home, three and a half point favorites. They lose Sterling Shepard last week. This projects as a Saquon Barkley, you know extravaganza there's no one to throw to on the giants as as the giants beat reporters were talking about how they have the deepest wide receiver room in the nfl and i promise you i'm in new york and i heard this said more than one time by more than one person and this team ha that has no wide receivers none but the deepest wide receiver room in the nfl is once again without anybody to catch passes um not that they have a quarterback that can deliver the only thing going for the Giants for me is that the Bears are so much worse in all uh, or or also suck. I don't know if worse. They also suck. So I don't know what to do with that. They also. Uh, suck. And oddly enough, these are they're a combined four and two, these teams. But that will change, you know, but one of these teams is going three and one, which is crazy. <laughs> um, Most likely the Giants, but we shall see. Yeah, the three, three and a half. Uh, the model likes just likes the points here. Um, take the points. I, I think it's a similar situation to the last game. What you're looking at, like if these teams are a, a coin flip, maybe you just take the three and a half points. Um, you know, I don't particularly love the game. Yeah, sometimes but, you got to pass on a game, also. Yeah, I, I don't particularly like this game. The uh, from a money standpoint, it's pretty split 50 50 tickets and uh, cash on the game. And then we're actually getting a little bit 60 40 on the money coming to the uh, to the over. It's actually flipped on the tickets. So possibly some sharp money on the on the total. I mean, I, I've never seen anything like this Chicago offense with the amount of times that they're throw, the, the lack thereof of passes. It's it's remarkable in this day and age. I, I the think there, there's no precedent for a quarterback doing what Justin Fields is doing, just not throwing the ball. Not I, I thought that was going to change last you know, week. I really thought against Houston, I said that you know they'll they'll open it up a little bit. They didn't. You know, the defense really got them. The, that game was 43 points. I, it was a lot because of the defense and turnovers and key spots. So um, look for more of the same. I mean, I can't we, we can't say Chicago's going to change until they until they do. You know, when you're in there, like I said, we're kind of mocking the, both teams for being two and one. But from a coach's standpoint, they're like, hey, 
All we're right, two well, and we're one. doing working. We're two and one. And we're taking on the Giants or the Bears this right. week. So we're they're going to go three. They're going to try to pound it. You saw what Dallas did. Like Dallas was able to run the ball on them. You know that's the Chicago mo. So, obviously. On that note, maybe da- maybe David Montgomery's hurt this week. He gets hurt last week in the chalk spot of all chalk spots. Backup comes in, does everything that David Montgomery was supposed to do. Goes goes bananas. And I I do have to say that Khalil Herbert, every time that he started for this Chicago Bears team, every time he has produced really well. So if Khalil Herbert starts again this week, if, and that's an if, David Montgomery is out this week, Khalil Herbert becomes one of the better paydowns and maybe also good chalk, even in a 39-point game, because this team is going to run the football. They have made it very, very clear that they're not going to throw. They're just going to keep running it. And they're going to sometimes throw to the running back if they throw it at all. So Khalil Herbert as the starter, you know, right up there with Jamal Williams. Um, Not as good. You know, the game environment's less good. But also, you know, Jamal has a team that can throw the football and might do that where where the Bears are definitely going to try to run it. And no matter what's going on in the game, they're just going to keep trying to run the football. Yeah, that there's no no way around. I mean, they look like the Nebraska of the 80s and 90s. Yeah, so you got to take the running backs from a team like that. Um, especially, I think Khalil Herbert projects better than Montgomery because Montgomery had Herbert there to vulture touches, where Herbert doesn't have anybody if Montgomery is out, and Herbert will get all the touches. So I really like that spot. Um, next up, we've got Arizona at Carolina taking on the Panthers. Panthers are favored you you skipped over one one o'clock game if you want to go to it did i wait wh- just pittsburgh on. oh wow that was on purpose because yes gross we do um, quick but yeah where how did i skip a game i'm looking is it not up there it is you passed it scroll over there you go oh okay yeah here we go all right so <laughs> i don't know, my eyes won't refuse to look at jets games um this one's pretty horrible as well um you know, the Jets travel to Pittsburgh. Well, there is an angle here um, to take on the Steelers. I, I I actually have a DFS play out of this game or two. 40 and a half point total. Pittsburgh home, three and a half point favorites. And this game, John, is the return of Zach Wilson. Hide your mom's best friend. Zach's coming back in town to start for the Jets. And what is the one thing that we could say Zach Wilson was extremely consistent at throughout all of last season, John? I don't know. What would that be? Turning over the football. Oh, okay. I knew it was negative. I just wasn't sure yeah. which way you were going. Just sucking, right? He's terrible. He turned over the football. Now this kid had almost no preseason because he's hurt the whole time. Right now he's coming in to the fire. At Pittsburgh, this is the play Steelers defense play of the year. <laughs> okay, now I don't care what ends up happening, but it is worth paying up for some Steelers exposure because the Steelers defense is already pretty good at being intimidating when they're at home. Now you add in Zach Wilson, turnover machine, not much of a preseason. Oh my goodness, load up on Steelers defense in this game. Can you play any pieces from the Jets offense here, John? Like, are you, can Elijah Moore? I think yes, by the way. I think fine. You want to play Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson? I think fine. But I'm loading up on that Steelers defense. Even with the Steelers defense, I wouldn't mind playing those guys. Not correlated. There's no connection whatsoever between that defense and will Elijah Moore have a good game. Doesn't matter. Matter of fact, a defensive touchdown gives you the offense back, the ball, more opportunities. Well, I'm not, I'm not playing them in the same lineup. But I would. I wouldn't even care. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to do it. But who knows? Yeah, I mean, you might be right because the way that with the lower scoring, I mean, uh, you, you, you might you be able to get away. Up, I just, yeah. Can I tell you that Burns has done a study on this, and Burns is our Millie Maker numbers man extraordinaire over at DFS Army. And he's done a study on this, and he tells me that the sweet spot on DraftKings for winning a Millie Maker with your defense is above 3K. 3K up to 35, 3,600. 
that you're that's a more likely zone to get a tournament takedown than you know just playing the cheapest viable well i don't doubt that but i'd like to see what the numbers are having uh the defense against against the opponent. i'm telling you I, i've i've looked into that too and it's not all that correlated it, i'm sure it's not especially yeah. if it's one i mean you can't obviously you're not doing it not against like that. yeah not against the whole but against team, one but, wide receiver that i mean I, I wouldn't doubt that it's a pot that it's potentially i'm a, not a, saying a, to a definitely player. purposefully do it but i will say that if you purposefully do that no one else will have it, it there's no doubt about that me. yeah no yeah, one no else will that. have it but nonetheless in this game I don't know uh, if there are any betting angles. I would be leaning the Steeler side of the game, you know, just because of how my Jets fandom and how bad Zach Wilson can be at times. It's going to be a stay away from me. We'll see what Wilson does. I, I kind of agree with you. Wilson coming back here is probably going to be worse than Flacco, at least in, initially. So uh, I'd be worried about him going on the road and being able to, to win a game in Pittsburgh, which essentially at a three-point spread, you're, you're hoping he does. Hide your mom's best friend. Yes. Zachy's back in town. Um, all right. Next up, we've got, um, and by the way, on that game, I, I think Najee Harris is also a playable player. We haven't seen a big game out of Harris. I don't love it, but like if I, I think you could do worse than Najee Harris against the Jets, but probably could do better also. Not excited about it. No, not excited. All right. So um, that being said, next up, we've got. Arizona heading out to Carolina and this, I got to know what the model, what the AI model is saying about this game, because Arizona's the underdog against the Panthers. And let me let that sink in. Arizona is the, uh, am I reading this wrong? Like, how is this no, possible? You, you have it right. I am seeing this. Correct. This is not wrong. Yeah. They are the underdog against the Panthers, right? So I don't know what the hell's going on here. 42 and a half points, super low total. What is that about? So I mean, everything about these lines. What John? I don't know what's going on. You gotta, you gotta straighten me out. I don't know what's happening here. I wish I could. This is why I told. This is a handful of games this week that just look odd. Um, and this is another one. I'm gonna tease the. I'm gonna tease the Cardinals up. So I forget what the other game was that I liked on the uh, on the teaser. What was it? The um, uh, what was the other game I liked? Uh, oh, Atlanta. I liked Atlanta. Atlanta. So yeah. go ahead and throw Atlanta in and tease them with. Uh, and tease them with Arizona up. We'll take both of those at plus eight and uh, take my shot. But the model thinks, uh, uh, I'm sorry. The model's yeah, got Arizona. Arizona uh, Should be a favorite. A smile favorite, but it, it, yeah. So the AI model definitely likes Arizona just a smidge here and definitely likes it versus, you know, um, this plus two number, which which makes sense. The other thing here I'm noticing is Arizona started off this game. And here, this is, this is really, like the, this game came out, it was minus three Arizona. So something happened where there was a massive steam move in favor of Carolina. I, I don't know why or what. And maybe, you know, somebody knows something here. Uh, I agree with you on the tease, though. I don't, I don't, the way this looks, it looks like it's trying to suck in your money. And I don't like that at all. So it, it does look, I got, look that way. And the, the squares are all coming in on Arizona and the sports book needs Carolina. So, when you see that, and if the line keeps moving in Carolina's favor, that's scary. Like the book already has a liability on Carolina, um, or I guess the liabilities on the Arizona side. They need Carolina to win the game. And if the line continues to move any higher when they already need money to come in on Arizona, that that's definitely a uh, something to be cautious about. And that's part of reading lines and, and, and looking at the hand, like looking where the money's coming in. It's it's helpful with the sharp app because we've got the, the sharp report. So we know because we're getting that information firsthand that Arizona is the side um, or Carolina, that is, is the side that the sports book needs to make some money. So if, if you don't see the line moving, you know, if this line continues to go higher and the book needs Carolina, that that's a that's something that you have to yeah. uh, definitely uh, definitely a, caution. definitely a concern. Yeah. Um, all right. And, and there's not much going on here. I, I think that Arizona does have carry. I think actually there are some interesting tournament pieces here. Christian McCaffrey, no one's going to play him. That's interesting. Um, Cardinal side, Kyler Murray is that elite kind of a quarterback, but he's not priced in the upper echelon elite three zone. So 
I think there's some interest. I, I have a mild interest in Kyler Murray just as a GPP leverage off of the big three. He's got just as much upside. He does it with his legs sometimes, not lately this season, but he's got it in him to put up a big score. So I like Kyler Murray in this game from DFS tournaments, large tournaments, maybe to Marquise Brown, who's coming off a uh, 17 target effort. Where did that come from? Right? So you start throwing a Marquise Brown that frequently, good things are going to happen. And um, even, even James Conner, a little bit interesting here. So a little bit of interesting DFS angles to this game considering how low the total is. I, I just think the total is off and we should be looking at the over on this one. All right, last game. Actually, we got two more games two more. here yeah, two to, go. Up to, to cover. First up, we've got pretty much a stinker, New England against the Packers. And I don't even want to spend a lot of time on this one, John. Um, no, just, there's no DFS playable angles in this I game mean, other than maybe Packers defense. When was the last time you saw a 10-point game and like a 40 and a half? total i mean it's it, in the nfl it's crazy so it's big big line big spread low total i mean that's everything you, you look for to not play in uh, dfs but from a betting standpoint the model thinks it's a little overdone seven and a half they think the line should be um on on at the model and uh as far as the cash that's coming in the spread we've got about a 60 40 split money coming in on the new england side but 60 40 yeah. on the tickets for Green Bay. So we are seeing probably a little sharp money come in on New England. Cause I do think this, I, I do think that's a big price for a, a defense. The New England defense is pretty solid. Green Bay hasn't shown anything on offense yet. You could totally more, see this being a, a very low scoring game. Yeah. Green Bay offense is just not that good either this season there. And they're definitely not blowing teams out of the water. The other thing with the model though, and in fairness to it, an AI model is not going to be the best at accounting for like Brian Hoyer, right? It's a complete unknown variable. It's very difficult for any sort of computer modeling system to account for those type of situations where it's like a really low level, maybe quarterback coming in or maybe not. Well, I don't know. I, I don't, I, I don't think there's it. that bit. They do account for it. Just, you know, the model does account for that. But the, um, you know, I don't I don't know if the gap is that if it's that big of a difference um, in the quarter. You know, I don't know how much of a yeah, well, how like much Mac you're getting Jones, maybe two great. points yeah. with uh, with Jones. If you look, though, um, at where the 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 money's coming in, the the sports book needs New England, so the people are betting uh, Green Bay at the particular sports book that we have access to. So they, as of right now, they do need New England. I mean, if I had to pick one side, I would really take New England. Here's the thing: when you look at and these are rare, but when you get a, a double digit uh, spread with a low total like this, you they tend to be highly correlated. That is, if the game goes under, you're looking at the dog covering. And if the game goes over, you're looking at the favorite covering. So keep that in mind. You, you might be able to play a little parlay if you like New England, take it with the under. I love it. Um, yeah, no no DFS angles for me here. None. I don't want it. Nothing to do with this game. Although I will tell you that if I had to sort of place a guess on what the Packers will do, they will run uh, what, what the Patriots will do. They will run, 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 and run some more. So I do think their running backs will get the work. I just, I, I can't go there. Um, their team total is so low. And, and the Packers just have nothing going on on offense that excites me. Um, last game on the slate, we've got the Broncos heading out to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders. Broncos, this, this is another one. Broncos are two and a half point road underdogs in this spot and the total here 46 it's kind of um it's kind of in no man's land a little bit that 46 point total and um as far as the broncos go man that offense is kind of weird uh I, i've russell wilson is not settled in yet he's not looking very good um weird ass subway commercial to boot i don't know what's going on with with uh, <laughs> russell wilson in general um does he suck now it's it's going back more than a year of being mediocre I think he could turn it around, but I'm just not sure. And the Raiders, I, I I can only say I feel like they've been a little disappointing to start the season. You know, it's a little disappointing for me. So, do you see any betting angles here? I'm I'm leaning I'm leaning uh, Las Vegas uh, minus two and a half because I just think the uh, Broncos are just yeah a, a lot of people are, and that's why the book the sports book needs Denver in this game because yeah, people I bet they do. In. I'm yeah, you know it's it, it's like people are looking at it. How many games? You know, Vegas are they going to lose another game? Denver looks like they've been kind of lucky to, to get to two wins. The thing about Denver, their defense, though, is 
playing at an elite level. Now, everyone's focused on because we were anticipating Russell Wilson to take this offense over. We knew they had a pretty good defense, and it's like, are they going to are they going to have the offense finally where they're going to be one of the top teams to compete with? Now, remember, it hasn't been as drastic, but remember what happened with Brady when he went to Tampa. You know, it took them a good 10, 11 weeks, and then they get, they got that thing rolling, and they had a really dominant defense too. So I don't have that much confidence in this head coach. So that's, you know, that that's one thing. And I think Russell Wilson was showing signs the last year uh, of not being the same quarterback that he's been. Also, when these guys don't run, I tell you this all the time, whenever, and Russell Wilson, I don't consider a running quarterback, but his legs are such a big part of what he does. And when you, when you handcuff these guys, or maybe leg cuff these guys. They don't, they're not the same. And while Russell Wilson, we're not looking for Russell Wilson to run for 50 yards a game. Just the fact that he's not get, you know, when they they won that game strictly because he took off. Like that's how they won that that game winning drive that they had um after the 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 safety. It was it was Russ making it happen with his legs. And again, he doesn't have to be Lamar Jackson, but he's got to, he's got to extend uh drives. Get that five, six yards on third and five when you need it with the legs. And that is, is going to be the difference. So if they let them play, I think they'll they'll be a little bit better. But I do expect this team as the season goes on to improve. But this, uh, just like I said, the sports book right now needs Denver. People are hammering Vegas. It's 80-20 on, uh, on the cash on the Vegas side. And almost all the money coming in on the under. Again, the Raiders, the Raiders have not been good offensively. So I'd be worried here in this game, just uh, blindly backing uh, Vegas. I do think this game stays tight. This is another one of those games I love to tease it over because I don't think Denver's capable of getting blown out. Uh, I think they keep the game close, and I like teasing Denver up here to eight and a half. I like I like the teasers this week. Uh, you know, I might take those angles with a couple of these games that look like they're going to be really, really close. So I'm really loving that angle that you're going with, especially with some of these close underdogs. Like, you know what? Are they really going to lose by that much? You know, if they lose, it's probably three, four point margin one way or the other. It's a super close game. So if you could tease up a couple of these close games, that absolutely makes a lot of sense uh, in my mind um, here. I, I really love that play. As far as DFS angles go, there's not much going on in this game. Um, Mac Collins, what? Last week we went nuts with Mac Collins. It was an awesome play um, for on the Raiders. And if if um, if Hunter Renfro is out again, maybe, you know, we can go back to that situation a little bit. But um, you know, Devontae Adams, these are all neutral plays. No one is going to be excited about playing Devontae this week, which makes him interesting from a tournament perspective, just because this game is so milk toast, it's not going to stand out. Same thing with Cortland Sutton. It's not going to stand out playing Cortland Sutton, but the guy's getting a lot of targets, and he absolutely has a big game in him, so it could happen here. And if I'm trying to enter large-scale tournaments, this is a game where I think you can get some pieces from. Even Javante Williams has some interest in large GPP. Not, not a regular guy that I'm going to be targeting normally, but in large GPP, I don't mind it either. Melvin Gordon had the big week last week. The, it usually, the pendulum usually swings with a team like Denver. It's going to swing back to Javante this week. So um, there are some angles here that are more large format GPP uh, tournament angles. Versus like anybody that I'm looking to target in my tight builds that I'm building for, you know, smaller entries, but definitely some, some angles to pursue, but mostly from a ownership leverage standpoint for me. Um, and John, that's going to do it uh, for the main slate NFL week four. This is the game plan. Remember, if you want John's picks and my picks and my plays over at Sharp app, uh, my betting picks, go get signed up at Sharp app. Go to sharp.app or download the app on your iOS or iPhone or Android store. Wherever you get your apps, you can get the Sharp app. Most a lot of a lot of what we have going on in there is free. The top props article, um, the the comparative odds, the the comparative props, all those things are totally free. And if you want the betting models, the AI, the betting handles, and of course the sportsbook liability um, sheets and all of that, you just get a Sharp Pro premium plan. It's really worth it. And of course, if you like DFS and crushing and making money, you want access to the tools, everything we have over at DFS Army, you can get signed up as a VIP. DFSArmy.com promo code geek gets you 10% off. Of course, we want to thank our sponsor Thrive for uh, sponsoring the show. If you go sign up at Thrive using promo code ARMY, there will give you with your deposit, not just a match, 
but two tickets to enter those $25 big weekly tournaments that they put out every single week. $50, $100 gets you $250 worth of goodies. Sign up at Thrive using promo code ARMY. For John Statsational Alessia, for myself, Kevin Allen, a.k.a. The Geek, I will see you guys next time on another game plan. Take care, everybody.